Our first reader is Senator Joe Markley, and he will be reading a poem from Leaves of Grass. Leaves of Grass was a work in progress. It was first published, I think, in 1855, and it was fairly short, but Walt Whitman continued to add to it as it went on. I don't know how many editions there finally were, but this is from Leaves of Grass. Welcome, Joe Markley. Thank you, Sue. The introduction will be short because the poem, even trimmed somewhat, is a little bit long. Um, D.H. Lawrence said of Walt Whitman, uh, before him nobody and beyond him nobody. Um, he was the first great modern poet and Leaves of Grass, as Sue has said, was his collected works. And, work, and because of a very healthy earthiness, um, it was banned repeatedly. It says in your notes, he lost his job in the interior department when his boss found it in his desk, his own copy of his own book. Um, more, uh, more famously, maybe more uh, uh, directly, it is the book at the end of his life when he was a famous poet, uh, what's called the deathbed edition, was the book that made the phrase banned in Boston uh, famous when it was banned there. And this poem is about Abraham Lincoln. He saw, Whitman saw Lincoln as the fulfillment of a kind of a, a great man of the people that he had seen coming and that who arrived in this, in this perfect form to his point of view. And he saw Lincoln's death as the great event in American history and kind of the, the sealing with blood of the Union. Um, and he knew Lincoln in this very peculiar, uh, deep but impersonal way. Uh, Whitman lived some time in Washington during the Civil War, and Lincoln would pass in his carriage coming down from the uh, soldier's home where he spent his evenings in the summertime, and uh, Whitman would bow to him uh, deeply on the sidewalk, and Lincoln would nod uh, gravely to him. And one day Lincoln said to his bodyguard, Layman, there is something in that man. But they never spoke. Um, but uh, he wrote this poem, which I love dearly, in reaction to, uh, to Lincoln's death. And I have asked my nephew, Sam Duffy, to uh, my favorite nephew, <laughs> to uh, uh, help me with it and to give it a little uh, variety to make it a little more interesting for you. When lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed and the great star early drooped in the western sky at night, I mourned and yet shall mourn with ever-returning spring. Ever-returning spring, Trinity sure to me you bring, lilac blooming perennial and drooping star in the west, and thought of him I love. O oh, powerful western fallen star, O oh, shades of night, O oh, moody, tearful night, O oh, great star disappeared, O oh, the black murk that hides the star, O oh, cruel hands that hold me powerless, O oh, helpless soul of me, O oh, harsh surrounding cloud that will not free my soul. In the dooryard fronting an old farmhouse near the whitewashed paling stands the lilac bush, tall growing, with heart-shaped leaves of rich green, with many a pointed blossom rising delicate, with the perfume strong I love, with every leaf a miracle. And from this bush in the dooryard with delicate colored blossoms and heart-shaped leaves of rich green, a sprig with its flower I break. In the swamp, in secluded recesses, a shy and hidden bird is warbling a song. Solitary, the thrush, the hermit, withdrawn to himself, avoiding the settlements, sings by himself a song. Song of the bleeding throat, death's outlet song of life. For well, dear brother, I know if thou wast not granted to sing, Thou would surely die. Over the breast of the spring, the land amid cities. Amid lanes and through old woods, where lately the violets peep from the ground, spotting the gray debris. Amid the grass in the fields, each side of the lanes, passing the endless grass. Passing the yellow speared wheat, every grain from its shroud in the dark brown fields uprising. Passing the apple tree blows of pink and white in the orchards. Carrying a corpse to where it shall rest in the grave. Night and day journeys a coffin. Coffin that passes through lanes and streets, through day and night, with the great cloud darkening the land, with the pomp of the in-looped flags, with the cities draped in black, 
with the show of the states themselves as of crepe-veiled women standing. When processions long and winding in the flambeaux of the night, with the countless torches lit, with the silent sea of faces and the unbared heads, with the waiting depot, the arriving coffin and the somber faces, with dirges through the night, with the thousand voices rising strong and solemn, with the mournful voices of the dirges poured around the coffin, the dim-lit churches and the shuddering organs. Where amid these you journey with the tolling, tolling bells, perpetual clang. Here, coffin that passes, I give you my sprig of lilac. Not for you, for one alone. Blossoms and branches green to coffins all I bring. For fresh as morning, thus would I bring a carol for you, O sane and sacred death. Over all bouquets of roses, O death, I cover you with roses and early lilies. But mostly, and now the lilac that blooms the first copious, I break. I break the sprigs from the bushes with loaded arms. I come, pouring for you, for you and the coffins, all of you, O death. Oh, what shall I hang on the chamber walls? And what shall the pictures be that I hang on the walls to adorn the burial house of him I love? Pictures of growing spring and farms and homes, with the fourth month eve at sundown and the gray smoke lucid and bright, with floods of the yellow gold of the gorgeous, indolent, sinking sun, burning, expanding the air. With the fresh, sweet herbage underfoot, and the pale green leaves of the trees prolific. In the distance, the flowing glaze, the breast of the river with the wind dapple here or there, and with ranging hills on the banks, with many a line against the sky, and shadow. And the city at hand, with dwellings so dense, and stacks of chimneys, and all the scenes of life, and the workshops, and the workmen homeward returning. Lo, body and soul, this land, my own Manhattan with spires and the sparkling and hurrying tides and the ships. The varied and ample land, the south and the north and the light, Ohio's shores and flashing Missouri and the far spreading prairies covered with grass and corn. Lo, the most excellent sun, so calm and haughty, the violent and purple morn with just felt breezes. The gentle, soft born, measureless light, the miracle spreading, bathing all the the fulfilled noon, the coming eve delicious, the welcome night and the stars over my city shining all enveloping man and land. Now while I sat in the day and looked forth. In the close of the day with its light and the fields of spring and the farmer preparing his crops. In the large unconscious scenery of my land with its lakes and its forests. In the heavenly aerial beauty after the perturbed winds and the storms. Under the arching heavens of the afternoon swift passing and the voices of children and women. The many moving sea tides and I saw the ships how they sailed. And the summer approaching with richness and the fields all busy with labor. And the infinite separate houses, how they all went on, each with its meals and minutia of daily usages. And the streets, how their throbbings throbbed, and the city's pen. Lo, then and there, falling upon them all and among them all, enveloping me with the rest, appeared the cloud, appeared the long black trail, and I knew death, its thought, and the sacred knowledge of death. And then with the knowledge of death as walking one side of me and the thought of death close walking the other side of me and I in the middle as with companions and as holding the hands of companions, I fled forth to the hiding, receiving night that talks not down to the shores of the water, the path by the swamp in the dimness to the solemn shadowy cedars and ghostly pines so still. And the singer so shy to the rest received me. The gray brown bird I know received us comrades three. And he sang the carol of death and a verse for him I love. From the deep secluded recesses, from the fragrant cedars and the ghostly pines so still, came the carol of the bird. And the charm of the carol wrapped me as I held as if by their hands my comrades in the night. And the voice of my spirit tallied the song of the bird. Come lovely and soothing death undulate round the world, serenely arriving, arriving in the day and the night to all, to each, sooner or later, delicate death. Praise be the fathomless universe for life and joy, and for objects and knowledge curious, and for love, sweet love, but praise, praise, praise for the sure enwinding arms of cool enfolding death. Dark mother, ever gliding near with soft feet of none chanted for thee a chant of fullest welcome. Then I chant it for thee. I glorify thee above all. I bring thee a song that when thou must indeed come, come unfalteringly. Approach strong, deliver us. When it is so, 
When thou hast taken them, I joyously sing the dead, lost in the loving, floating ocean of thee, laved in the flood of thy bliss, O death. From thee, me to thee, glad serenades, dances for thee I propose, saluting thee, adornments and feastings for thee, and the sights of the open landscape and the high spread sky are fitting, and fields and the life in the huge and thoughtful night. The night in silence under many a star, the ocean shore, and the husky whispering wave whose voice I know, and the soul turning to thee, O vast and well-veiled death, and the body gratefully nestling close to thee. Over the treetops I float thee a song. Over the rising and sinking waves. Over the myriad fields and the prairies wide. Over the dense packed cities all and the teeming wharves and waves. I float this carol with joy. With joy to thee, O death. To the tally of my soul, loud and strong, kept up the gray-brown bird with pure, deliberate notes, spreading, filling the night. Loud in the pines and cedars dim, clear in the freshest moist with swamp perfume, and I with my comrades there in the night. While my sight that was bound in my eyes unclosed as to long panoramas of vision, and I saw scant the armies, I saw as in noiseless dreams hundreds of battle flags, borne through the smoke of the battles and pierced with missiles, I saw them, and carried hither and yon, through the smoke, and torn and bloody, and all at last but a few shreds left on the staffs, and all in silence, and the staffs all splintered and broken. I saw battle corpses, myriads of them, and the white skeletons of young men, I saw them. I saw the debris, and debris of all the dead soldiers of the war, but they were not as was thought. They themselves were fully at rest. They suffered not. The living remained and suffered. The mother suffered, and the wife and the child suffered. The musing comrades suffered, and the armies that remained suffered. Passing the visions, passing the night, passing and loosing the hold of my comrades' hands. Passing the song of the hermit bird and the tallying song of my soul. Victorious song, death's outlet song, yet varying ever-altering song, as low and wailing, yet clear the notes, rising and falling, flooding the night, sadly sinking and fainting as warning and warning, and yet again bursting with joy, covering the earth and filling the spread of the heavens. As that powerful psalm in the night I heard from recesses passing, I leave thee, lilac with heart-shaped leaves. I leave thee in the dooryard, blooming, returning with spring. I cease from my song for thee, from my gaze on thee in the west, fronting the west, communing with thee, O comrade lustrous, with silver face in the night. Yet each I keep, and all retrievements out of the night, the song, the wondrous chant of the gray-brown bird. And the tallying chant, the echo aroused in my soul, with lustrous and drooping star, with the continents full of woe. With the lilac tall, and blossoms of mastering odor, with the holders holding my hand, nearing the call of the bird, comrades, Mine and I in the midst, and their memory ever I keep for the dead that I loved so well. For the sweetest, wisest soul of all my days and lands, and this for his dear sake. Lilac and star and bird twined with the chant of my soul. There in the fragrant pines. And the cedars dusk and dim. 